Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where we're going to look at all things standard, modern, legacy, as well as some notable commander cards as we always do each and every week. Quickly before we get started though, if you check out the description below... You'll find a few ways to help support us and what we do here, one of which is our Patreon page. We just created a new classic art token for treasure, as you can see on the right side. It actually came out pretty awesome. I'm excited about it. So if you want details as to how to get that or our other classic art token, the angel, just check out the Patreon page. Also, another way to support us is through any purchases you make on Amazon. Once you go through the Amazon product links you see below, anything you purchase once you go through those links will get a small percentage back. And then finally, Flipside Gaming is also given a promo code for our viewers. You can save some money from the items they have there, which includes includes Iconic Masters pre-orders. With that being said, let's get into it for today. And we're going to start off with the top five standard cards that have lost value this week. So just a quick word about standard. I have not rolled the Ixalan cards into the standard lists yet. They are still a little turbulent. I was hoping to do it this week, but we did just talk about the cards a few days ago, so not a whole lot changed. But my plan is to continue to watch the Ixalan cards, and I might do a special edition of the Market Watch early this week if they're continuing to move a lot, especially kind of on the downward side, as a lot of them are as more packs are being opened. But if they are getting more stable, then I'll just roll them into the next week's episode. So we'll just kind of see what happens there. But as far as the cards of loss value this week, number five is the Locust God, down 39 cents to $7.99. So this card isn't doing anything huge in the standard environment right now. It's a great commander card, but I think at this point, a lot of the commander players that we're looking for, they have their copy. So this will continue to tick down. Herald of Anguish coming at number four. This is down 43 cents to 457. And kind of sad in a way, the improvised deck looked kind of good coming out of week one, week two, but it has slowed down a little bit and lost momentum since then, unfortunately. So with that, this card comes down a little bit. Number three, Metallic Mimic, down 46 cents to 12.50. We talked about this card at length last week, so I don't want to take up too much time, but the bottom line is you just kind of felt like going into this new standard, this card was going to be an all-star because we were looking at a set coming in that was all about tribal, and this card was successful in tribal zombie decks even before there was a true tribal focus, so how could this card not be good? It hasn't really performed in standard the way a lot of people expected it to, and yeah, it has shown up here and there, like in the cat deck, which saw some moderate success early on, but for the most part, it's not really fulfilling the role a lot of people intended, so it is ticking down. This is still a very high price point for this card, considering the lack of play that it's really seeing at this point. Still a good card for the like commander and such, and I think maybe that's what it's riding right now a little bit to keep its value up slightly, but expect this to continue to tick down. Number two, Gideon of the Trials, down 93 cents to 19.99. Now, Gideon's seeing play in the approach decks, and I don't think that's going to change, but you have to remember, that's usually a two of or so in the deck, which maybe doesn't warrant a $20 price tag. Now, Gideon is also seeing a little bit of modern control play, too, so you do want to keep that in mind when you look at this card. But a lot of the boost in value which came when Ixalan was coming out was really more due to the fact that this card was simply, again, being speculated on and brewed on for maybe getting a tribal build. And that really hasn't panned out. So expect this to take down a little more. Coming in at number one, Nicol Bolas, God Pharaoh, down $1.02 to twelve thirty-two. So this card's been on top of our list for a few weeks now as it continues to tick down rather aggressively. Now, the card is an interesting card and does show up every once in a while in like control builds, for example, but it's not a dominant force in this new standard or anything like that. And a lot of people maybe were hoping it was going to play a stronger role since it is Nicol Bolas, but it's still a great commander card, and I think that's why it hasn't dropped faster, but this will continue to drop. All right, let's move on to the top five standard cards that have gained value this week. Coming at number five, Fetid Pools, up 76 cents to 10.50, breaking the $10 mark. Actually quite impressive. So this is all about the players now scrambling to get their mana bases in place for this new standard and actually for the next few standards to come. This is a big part of it, especially right now, Demir Colors are doing exceptionally well in the formats. You're going to notice cards like this will have a little bit more of an increase attached to them than maybe some of the other color producing dual lands. So, yeah, this is a good one, and it doesn't hurt that it also counts as an island in a swamp. 
Number four, Botanical Sanctum up $1.22 to nine eighty-two. So pretty much the same story here. Key part of a lot of mana bases for some pretty big decks right now. Number three, Anointed Procession up $1.54 to $10. So on our special Ixalan episode we did on Wednesday, uh, we talked a lot about the Abzan Token deck starting to gain some steam, becoming more popular, putting up some good results. And this is a key part of that deck, of course. And I think that deck's the real deal. I think it's going to stick around definitely throughout the rest of this meta. So we'll have to kind of watch and see how much play and how much attention it gets to the Pro Tour. That could make a big difference on the value of a card like this going forward. But I do think regardless, this card is going to go up over the next few weeks before it starts to stabilize. Number two, has read the Fervent, up $1.54 to $19.80. So Ramonette Brad, still good. Who knew, right? <laughs> the card's awesome and the deck's awesome. So that's not changing. I don't think it hurt that Worlds really showcased Ramonette Brad quite a bit. And you do have to adjust expectations there. The Worlds tournament is going to be a completely different meta from what you normally see in bigger tournaments. And just the nature of that tournament, no one's taking any risks with a lot of new cards or anything like that at that point. So yeah, Ramonet Brad had a lot of attention on it due to that tournament that carried over into the regular standard format because the deck is still very competitive and very, very good. Coming in at number one, the Scarab God again, up 444 to 4699. So yeah, the card's awesome. It's the real deal showing up in a number of great builds in standard. And the price continues to tick up. And I do think it will continue to tick up for a few more weeks here, especially again as we get closer to the Pro Tour and the card will see some camera time, no doubt. Probably will spike again, even if it's just a little bit. So with that being said, though, be careful with this one. This is an extremely high price for a card that was printed as much as this one has been printed. So sure, it's seeing a ton of play, and there's a lot of hype around it right now, a lot of people scrambling for this card, and that's not going to change as we go through the Pro Tour in a few weeks. But after that, expect this card to start to come down and stabilize a little bit. All right, let's move on to a modern. With the top five cards that lost value this week, Coming in at number five is Maelstrom Nexus, down $1.91 to $20.89. So this card had a lot of popularity just a few months ago as the Commander 2017 decks were coming out. This does work as an upgrade for, say, the Dragon deck, for example. And it's just a really cool Commander card generally. So we saw some spiking with it, just stabilizing down a little bit now. Number four, Escape Shift down 204 to 55.99. Another card that was hot recently, especially when it was revealed that it was not going to be reprinted in Iconic Masters. So because of that, we saw some increases. So again, this is just normal stabilization off of those increases. Number three, Thought Seize from Lorwyn, down 212 to 3961. Here's a card that saw some very aggressive spiking just a couple months ago. But since then, it was revealed that it was going to be in Iconic Masters actually with this original art. So players that are fans of this first version of the card, they could compromise now and maybe wait for the Iconic Masters version to come out and have that same art on it. So I do think that's what's happening a little bit with this card. The Lorwyn version, though, is always going to be rare, and it is the original, so don't worry. It's going to hold value, but it is stabilizing down a little bit this week. Number two, Chalice of the Void from Modern Masters, down 390 to 7650. So this is still a fantastic modern card, great for sideboards, great for other formats too outside of modern. So yeah, this card is ticking down though a little bit because it has seen a lot of aggressive spiking over the last six to eight months or so. So this doesn't surprise me too much. Also with Masters 25 around the corner in March, I think some people are going to be a little hesitant to pick up a card at the 70, 80, even $90 range. So they're going to wait a little bit and kind of see what happens, I think, and hedge their bets. Now this doesn't show up there. This card is probably going to spike again unfortunately but if it does at least you'll see some stabilization coming in at number one is tarmogoyf again we're looking at two versions this week with the modern masters 2015 version being down 314 to 7199 and the modern masters version down 419 to 8099 now, Goyce have been going down, and it is due to a little bit less percentage of play of the field in Modern, and yeah, there's a lot of copies out there. I mean, give or take a lot of copies. They were just reprinted a number of times in all these Master sets, although those are limited sets and they were Mythics, but they just start to compound on top of each other, I think is what's starting to happen here. So, with all that being said, it leads to some loss of value when it comes to these Goyfs, and I have seen a little bit of a resurgence 
in the popularity maybe of John Dex and Modern, so maybe we start to finally see some stabilization soon here, but I do think these are approaching maybe more of a fair price, and I still think they're still overpriced, honestly, for the amount of play they see and such, but Tarmogoyf is a very iconic card, and you do have to keep that in mind, too, when looking at pricing, so it's good to see these coming down a little bit. Maybe some players will be able to grab some copies here and there, which is a good thing for the game and for the format generally. So, yeah, we'll have to keep watching this. One thing I will point out, too, I've said this in other videos but modern masters 2015 version it's losing a lot of value right now if i'm buying a copy especially online i'm trying to avoid that version honestly because of a lot of print errors that we're seeing just generally in that product so you're better off just grabbing a modern masters 2017 version i think or maybe even spending just a few more dollars for the original modern masters version now future site versions are retaining value a little bit better, hanging out around the $110 mark at this point. And yes, they are losing ground too, but that is the original card with the unique art and such, and it's a lot harder to find copies of those. So that is going to maintain more value than the others just generally. All right, let's move on to the modern cards that have gained value this week. And I've kind of alluded to this as we've been talking, but modern is a little bit slow right now. And it's a great format. People are still playing it, don't get me wrong. But there's a few things that got people maybe waiting a little bit before making some big pickups here. Wizards teased this week that they may unban something in the format around February-ish or so. So that's got some people kind of waiting to see maybe before they buy into a deck because something significant being unbanned could actually change the meta a little bit or maybe change which deck they decide to buy into so i think you have that going on right now also masters 25 coming out in march has got a lot of people a little bit nervous about some high ticket pickups so i think that's happening and also too once we get a little bit more into the winter and there's more high profile modern tournaments happening then of course there'll be a resurgence in a lot of the popularity and a lot of the attention on the format right now a lot of people are just looking at things like standard and commander because that's where the attention is currently so you are going to see a lot of actually commander cards not necessarily great modern cards on this list because they're modern legal and the modern cards aren't really moving that much Coming in number five is a good example of that, Seaborn Muse. This is the 10th edition version of $1.18 to twenty five thirty six. This is a awesome commander staple. Number four, doubling season up $1.21 to fifty eight ten. This is the Modern Masters version. This card was ticking down a little bit recently, so it's snapping back up now, which isn't too surprising. This is a great card. It did not show up in Iconic Masters. Maybe it shows up in Masters 25, but we don't know for sure, right? And this card was extremely hot around November, December of last year when the Breed Lethality Commander 2016 deck came out. A lot of people were picking this up as a very easy upgrade to that deck. So, yeah, it's still a fantastic card. Great for Commander. It has seen a little bit of fringe modern play in, like, doubling Planeswalkers decks a while back, but it's not really a modern staple or anything like that. This is more of a Commander card on the list. Coming in number three, Scalding Tarn. We got two versions here. Zendikar up $1.33 to sixty-two fifty, with Modern Masters 2017 up $1.55 to fifty-eight sixty-three. Okay, so here's a card that is very constructed playable in Modern, not to mention Legacy and Vintage. So, you know what? All of these enemy colored fetch lands, we got a little bit of a price break with them, thanks to Modern Masters 2017, but unfortunately, that can only last so long, and these things are already ticking up. We don't know when they're going to be reprinted again. I mean, Wizards could surprise us, sure, but they just reprinted them, and I don't really see it happening anytime soon, quite honestly. And because of that, I think the buyer's confidence in these cards are pretty high right now. If they need them, they're just going to pick them up, and it just feels like they're going to be going up for a while the card could potentially get back up to $80, $90 before we see a reprint again. So some players are just hedging their bets and buying them now. Number two, Vidalkin Ori, up $1.84 to $14.10. Another classic commander staple here. This is the original Fifth Dawn version. All right, coming at number one. Okay, maybe I cheated a little bit this time. Drowned Catacomb from Magic 2010, up $1.92 to eight oh five. Okay, I could have probably put this on the standard list. The reason I kept it here was just simply because, yes, it is a modern legal card, and this particular version of it is from a modern set, not a standard set, technically. But if I put it on the standard side, it was going to knock off a card that actually had an interesting story behind it, which I thought was notable. Whereas if I left it on this list, I'm only knocking off a card that went up less than a dollar and it wasn't really worth talking about. So I figured, yeah, let's just leave it on the modern list. And it just goes to show you, though, we're kind of following where the story is. And the story this week is modern's kind of slow 
And the cards that are popular, and even when I say popular, I'm just talking about increases of less than $2. <laughs> the cards that are popular are commander cards mostly, and cards like this one that cross over well into standard. So, important reminder though, these cards that we see in Ixalan, they've been reprinted many times, the first time being in Magic 2010. So, there are some players excited enough about the standard format, excited enough about this mana base, to pay a little extra to go back and pick up the original copy. So, I think that's pretty interesting. Thing, and it tells the story that, yes, yeah, Standard's actually pretty hot and appears to be pretty successful right now. All right, let's move on to Legacy with the cards that lost value this week. Now, we are seeing less and less of the big buyouts that we've been seeing over the last couple months, which is good for the market. Those kind of spikes lead to a lot of instability, which leads to loss of confidence, and that's not necessarily a good thing for the market just generally. So it's good to see they're slowing down a little bit. But what we are going to see on this list are a lot of these buyouts from the last couple months as they're being reintroduced back into the market are sliding significantly. Coming in at number five, Guardian Beast from Arabian Nights, down $35.44 to $240. Perfect example. And basically every card we're going to see today is an example of a card that was recently bought out and is being sold back into the market now. Number four, Ernam Jin, down $41 to $389. Now this one's from Arabian Nights. This actually is not a reserve list card. It's been reprinted a number of times. You can find real cheap copies if you just want a copy of the card. But this was bought out due to a lot of the excitement around Arabian Nights recently, but it is starting to come back down now. Number three, Living Plane, down $42.45 to $147.50. Same story here. This card's being reintroduced now back into the market, sliding down a little bit. Although I do think this card sometimes is overlooked. It's a very good pickup from Legends. And maybe when this bottoms out, perhaps around the $125 mark, it might not be a bad pickup if you don't have a copy just to have to either mess around with or just have in your collection. So it's an interesting card to keep an eye on. But yeah, unfortunately with these buyouts, the cards never go back down to where they started. Even if they all get sold back into the market, which they typically do, the buyout itself generates a lot of buzz around the card and people People get nervous that they're not going to get another chance to get the card. So when they see the price come back down, sometimes they pull the trigger and buy it and add it to their collections, which means that there is more hype and more excitement around a card after the buyout than there was before the buyout. Number two, Diamond Valley, down $44.99 to $309.01. Another example of this. And finally, Drop of Honey, down 5839 to 385.83. Now, this card originally got some attention because it was a two of in the sideboard of Legacy Lands. But then shortly after that, it became a target of a buyout. Unfortunately, it spiked really high and it is coming down now, which is good to see. All right, let's look at the cards that have gained value this week. And you're going to see that the prices are a lot lower than what we have been seeing. Coming in number five, Mana Barbs, up 892 to 1249. This is the unlimited version. And this is a pretty high percentage increase this week. So I don't really think it's a buyout, though. I think this could just be due to the fact there was a little more attention on the 93 94 format this week. There were some pros playing it casually that were tweeting about it and such. So whenever that happens, it does draw a little attention to the format. And this card is actually pretty decent there. Number four, Tropical Island from Unlimited, up 897 to 397.94. Wow, it feels like old times. We're talking about dual lands just going up a little bit, going down a little bit again. So it does show you that a lot of the craziness that was going on in this market is starting to subside a little bit. Number three, okay, here's a buyout. Divine Intervention. I wouldn't want to disappoint y'all. Uh, this one's up 12.96 this week to 57.47. Just kind of a funny troll card from Legends. It's on the reserve list, and yeah, somebody is buying it out, obviously. Number two, Serendib Ifrit from Arabian Nights of 13.27 this week to 304.99. Now, this card was recently bought out. I think what we're seeing here is maybe the tail end of the buyout. And this card actually was going down in value last week. It stabilized up a little more this week. It could just be due to the pricing, the rate that's being reintroduced into the market. So I do expect this to go back down over the course of the next few weeks. And number one, we have Scrubland from Unlimited, up 17.50 this week to 241.91. Okay, let's close things out with a few notable cards. A couple interesting maybe commander cards here, but just some things I want to point out. First, we have Kindred Dominance, up a $1.03 to two ninety. This is a card from Commander 2017. I think it's maybe one of the first Commander 2017 new cards that we featured on the show. And yeah, this one's awesome. It's great, obviously, for tribal decks. And if you're into tribal commander you might want to pick up this single or pick up the deck that it's in. But just regardless, this card is having a pretty nice percentage increase this week. 
Herborg Justice. This is up in dollar eighteen to three ninety nine. This is a reserve list card, and I remember this seeing Legacy play like a little bit years ago, like in a zombie deck. But for the most part, this is more about Commander than anything else. But again, a nice percentage increase on this card this week. Gush from Chandra versus Jace Dual Deck, up a dollar twenty three to five thirteen. The reason I wanted to showcase this card more than anything was to point out the fact that a lot of times you can find deals in dual deck cards or dual deck anthology cards and things of that nature because a lot of times players forget about them or don't search those out when they're looking for singles of the card. And this is an example of a card that actually was well under the price of other versions of Gush and kind of caught up a little bit this week because somebody probably noticed it, but a lot of times you can find deals there. So if you're looking for a particular card and it feels a tad expensive, check out some dual decks. Sometimes you can find cheaper versions of the same card there with the same art and everything. So it's just worth checking into. And finally, we have Killer Bees from Legends up $1.67 this week to $16.67. Now, this is not a reserve list card. It's been reprinted. You can find cheaper versions than this one, but I think this is still very affordable, actually. And again, I think this just ticked up due to a little bit of emphasis this week on $93.94. It's a good card there. And again, I think it may be with all the chatter around it, maybe some people start looking into it a little more. But yeah, just generally, Killer Bees is a fun card back in the day. It still holds up as a fun card for commander purposes and such nowadays all right with that being said those are the cards for today so like i said at the top of the show i'm going to watch Ixalan prices closely this week maybe i won't roll them in until the pro tour I'll, I'll watch it and kind of see what happens but as long as there's enough movement i will do a special edition of the market watch later in this week to look at the state of Ixalan singles but if not, maybe I'll just roll them into next week. So I'm just going to stay real close to it and play it by ear. But uh, definitely stay tuned for more information on that. Until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.